is it's got to do with the businesses and i'm hopeful that these discussions do break those two apart a little bit because not only is it keeping the business alive it's jobs and economy things so those are really important to us so yeah that's all i have to say thank you well, I just had a couple of questions, and it's 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 other individuals that are signing on board, and I think uh, uh, there's about 20, 22 of them here. Um, how many other uh, cities have senior water rights, uh, like the city of Columbia? Do you know that? And uh, it, it was on page two of the uh, city of Columbia Public Works. Uh, let's see who sent that. Um, Medora, I believe that came from you and it's on page two. It's got a list of all of those Flint Springs, uh, City of Ukiah, Coyote Valley, Dry Creek Rancheria. Um, and, and basically the question is who else has senior water rights? Uh, do you know offhand? Unfortunately, I don't have that information, but I can uh, find out for you. I don't believe that any other city listed here has senior water, right, water rights. Um, it's possible that some of these other entities do. Um, but I know that Ukiah and Healdsburg do not. Well, and, and, and if I'm understanding you correctly, um, um, you, you know, in my opinion, and of course I haven't made up my mind, there's a lot of reading and, and, and things to do here, but, you know, not participating preserves our water rights. Uh, participating puts them in some jeopardy uh, if not now, into the future? Um, participating do, does, doesn't does um, jeopardize the water rights per se. It um, creates an alternative scheme under which they're regulated while you are participating in the agreement. Um, if the city were to participate and then withdraw, there would be no um, long-term effect on the water rights. They would be preserved as they are. Thank you. Uh, there are there any other uh, questions? Do we, do we have members out in the uh, virtual world? Uh, we don't have any hands raised. Okay. Do we have a considerable number of individuals out there? Uh, there's three. Well, actually two because you're one of them as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm one. Mm -hmm. So two. David, anything else? Um, I was just going to make a comment. I think uh, yesterday or the day before, you mentioned to me that you were going to make sure that um, this information went out to the full city council prior to it hitting the city council agenda. Right. I think it would be beneficial to share the, the memo prepared by Redora along with the PowerPoint to the council. Um, you know, again, we're, we're, we have a kind of short time window before. This is going to be brought forward to the state board for possible action, and and to, to hit that May May target, we anticipate the state board would post something in early April. So we may be bringing something to council uh, at, as you know as, as early as as April or or possibly even late March. So you know this is quickly evolving, and and I want to make sure it's, it's fairly complicated that. If council's going to weigh in on this with your recommendation, that they have at least an opportunity to uh, try to get the background and get that to speak. So if you support that, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely prepare an email and get this out uh, to council uh, with with the PowerPoint. And of course, they can they can watch the presentation uh, to uh, get an overview of this. And really, at this point, what we want to do one is, is just check in, make sure council is or the subcommittee is aware of this effort and. and that there is this option for us to, to either voluntarily participate or to not participate. Um, and you know, thus far, we've, we've been taking the role of, of let's participate, let's uh, make sure our concerns, our perspective is shared during the development of these options. It, can, it continues to, uh, the process continues to evolve. I think we're up to, uh, is it seven options or eight options now, Redora? We're up to number eight right now. Okay, so it's it, it's something that it, they 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 are the, the steering committee is taking input and kind of evolve developing as as, as Bredor said in an iterative process these options to better reflect the different uh, water right holders within this upper Russian River watershed. 
And so, you know, I, I think a key decision is ultimately is going to be whether we want to participate voluntarily, but also if doing so, fully understand what the impact is potentially on our on our on our water rights. Um, so it, it will be something that you know ultimately we'll, we'll ask council to weigh in on, but we wanted to make sure we get your feedback and input early on in this process so we can offer her door any perspective that she can bring back to the spirit. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, again, I just want to reiterate, I mean, I'm not, I haven't made up my mind whether or not I want us to participate, but I would like to see, I don't think one size fits every community. I really think it's important that there be some types of businesses that are identified that are high use water just to survive. And I, I think there's communities that may have zero of those in their community. And the amount of water that's allotted to them shouldn't be the same as a community that has four different high use water uh, business within it. So I'd like to see maybe at least one of them address that issue, talking about different exceptions, if you will, where maybe the water allotment for a community that has two uh, breweries within it, that the water allotment may have a bonus of X amount recognizing those businesses require water to operate. So, I, I, so somehow it just can't be one size fits everybody and we end up shutting down businesses. So I'd like that at least to be discussed and hear what the, what the board has to say about that. Thank you. And, and you know, I think it, 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 I may be the state of the obvious, but um, just because we may decide not to participate, it doesn't mean that we're not doing our share to conserve. Yeah. Um, I think uh, last year we we did pretty good, um, and um, you know I'm not sure who were the best within Sonoma County, uh, with the other cities that draw uh, in Sonoma County and even up north. But but we're here to to help. It's a, it, it, everybody has to get involved. And so I just wanted to say that that we're we're conserving whether we're part of the agreement. So, so. Yeah. Redora uh, has her hand up. Yes, we're going, please. Yeah, I wanted that um, to address uh, that that first comment in that uh, you would like to see uh, certain types of businesses be identified and um, have assurance that the, their high uses can continue as it's um, important to the economy of the city. I think that a couple of the options that have evolved actually looks at historical water use. And because those businesses, uh, historical water use is included in that and they're recognized, those continue um, to, to kind of be accounted for in future uh, water, water demands and uh, conservation. Thank you. And just wanted to follow up. And as we enter into another dry year, potentially, there's always the risk of fire. And of course, fire requires water. And I'm not sure how that goes into the equation on how they compute use of the water per city when you have fire district that's within the city that, and a, that may very well be building tanker after tanker of water. And how do they how do we monitor? And, and equate all that into the scheme of water use for the community. But those are just questions you probably don't have answers, but I think I think they should be identified and discussed as a because it's something that's a real life situation. And we need to be prepared for that. And Councilman Ball, on, that, on, that, on your question, and I think it's it's a very appropriate. Uh, we, we are currently monitoring our, our monthly water use by, by water use type. And part of that effort is tracking you know, residential use or commercial use or industrial use, and then a whole host of other uses. And that goes into the petition uh, for health and safety that Myers Nave helped us prepare. And because we really did look at that water use over the last two year period of time so it's part of preparing the documentation to file that petition. And what we what, we're, what we do is we, we actually report not only our, our physical diversion, i.e. what we're pumping from our wells, but also we evaluate how that water gets put into the system. And 
determined by water use type. So that's how we're, how we're able to uh, do our reporting. And so the, the area that you touched on for Marpola of water use for, for like firefighting is something we have to, it, it's an area actually our goal will be to um, uh, request the fire district to provide better data uh, our estimates on their water use so we can do a more effective job at, at identifying that that usage and reporting it because it's a it falls under health and safety and we want to make sure uh, that we because it is so critical for our community that we're able to accurately report that data as being uh, used for firefighting purposes so that, that is an area that we are we're working on refining um, but we are we're doing a lot of the the uh, the analytics around that water use and tracking it as best we can, um, along with other water uses like uh, street sweeping, for example, we use water, uh, you know, we have water loss because of maybe a water leak. So we're all trying to do, trying to button those up as much as we can. And the, the water use for, for, for uh, firefighting purposes is, I think it is it characterized, we call it, it, it uh, for health, it, it's exempt Palmer. Uh, it's built into our petition for human health and, and safety um, as necessary water for um, health and safety needs. Um, so what that petition asked for was to increase the city's water use allotment under the curtailment order. It, it, it asked for an increase from 65 gallons per person per day to 104 gallons per person per day, and um, a significant portion of the water that was built into that allotment is reserved to uh, firefighting. It's a, it's a, every month now we've been, we, we log in to the state board website and we, we report our, our diversion and usage to as part of our compliance with the procurement order. And that, that's kind of, the, uh, the the other aspect too, if, if we if, if we don't participate, it's kind of status quo, and I think that's where we'll continue to report under the curtailment order uh, and be subject to the restrictions that are contained within that curtailment order. So this is kind of trying to create an alternative framework to that, and that's why I see you know there might be some possible benefits as we develop this option. You know, if we start looking at it, it's, it's either that's quote cool for tailing order, or we might be in some kind of voluntary agreement where we can work with other stakeholders. And there, there's some real pros and cons, and, and I think Palmer did a good job of this outline. There's, some, there's obviously some uh, legal concerns because you know that doesn't follow the the um, water right priority associated with the pre nineteen pre nineteen portion. Well, if there's no other questions, I'd like to thank uh, Palmer for joining us, and um, Vidara, thank you as well. And um, I'm sure we're going to get to weigh on, in on this quite a bit um, over the next month, a couple months, I should say. So, David, if there's nothing else, we'll move to the next item. I think we're ready. Okay. And again, thank you for joining us. I yeah, thank you for the presentation. Okay. And you'll be sending that to the full Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is the um, this <clears throat> discussion about development of a citywide street strike yeah. plan. Okay, uh, so we I just want to really provide an update, and this was a, a directed by the subcommittee to prepare a, a plan for um, addressing you know, the need for restriking of many of the uh, faded areas within our, our community. Uh, we, both Vanessa Apodoc, our interim city engineer, and myself, have been coordinating with Debbie Trans on developing a, um, <coughs> a, 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 a plan to present and bring back to this committee. We were also taking into account the, um, the analysis that's later on in the agenda that, uh, uh, regarding our, our uh, street conditions and pavement conditions. So looking at opportunities to develop a striking plan that also reflects where we may want to uh, undertake some other improvements so that we're not we're not restriping and then and, and then tearing it up. So 
that, that's a work in progress. Um, and what we'd like to be able to do is present to the subcommittee as, as really a, as, a, as, a, as a proposal that we can develop a comprehensive strategy and that we can use going forward. Um, and with, with, with the idea of prioritizing certain areas sooner rather than later, recognizing, for example, maybe in downtown, we may want to prioritize some certain striking there just to ensure that, that we, we uh, address you know, some of the fading um, stop bars and other things in, in critical traffic areas. But otherwise, develop a plan that, that will be um, something we can present to this subcommittee and then, and then the council. So that, that's a work in progress. Uh, Vanessa's really been leading up that process. I don't know, regard did if Vanessa gave, gave you an overview, uh, there, and if there's anything you wanted to share regarding the street bike striking plan. Yes, um, Vanessa indicated that she's going to be meeting with a traffic consultant to develop a scope and annual maintenance plan. Um, so there's a tentative meeting scheduled for uh, Thursday, January 27th, so it's a couple of days, and so um, that will be in progress. Yeah, so, so one of the things I'd really like to emphasize is the uh, areas that are basically uh, so faded or where, where you have WL Alliance that no longer a WL Alliance. We have several places within the city, especially a lot of Treadway, Foothill, and a lot of parts of Cloverdale Boulevard, which are the main, or, main arterial streets, where there was block dots that formed a double yellow line, and they're totally gone, which means people can actually, you know, they drive on them. So those are safety issues that really need to be the higher priority. As we do the study, I think it's important, but we do need to kind of put a plan to at least get the double get all the lines restriped or get the block dots re-put in sooner than later because of the potential safety issue and a potential accident. So I just wanted to re-emphasize that. And I think that the comments noted, we, uh, uh, Vanessa's already started developing a list of areas that, and I think it, it, it does reflect your, your, your feedback, Chris Member. Um, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll make sure we capture that and, I think you know what's what's been developed so far is is, is the beginning of a plan, and, and um, I, I think you know in the interim we'll want to identify if there are some critical uh, safety areas that we you know we, we can see if we can schedule getting those done in sooner, but also kind of develop the, the plan for for the community as no, well. Both are equally important, but right. the, the safety issues got to be. I, I think you know where we were going with this was. To develop kind of a, a, a striking plan with 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 uh, timing and cost elements, so that because we, we don't see it as something that you're going to do all in one year. You, you know, it's going to be over time, and then you're going to kind of start kind of like painting the Colgate Bridge. And, 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 and so uh, that way, we, we kind of have some budget numbers that we can work from. So uh, council could say, okay, every year we're going to allocate X number of dollars specifically for street striping, and we can see what we can do by um, uh, releasing some of that work via contract versus maybe some of that work can be done in the past. Thank you. So we'll leave this on the agenda. Sure. Under, uh, just for updates. That would be great. Okay, so then we're going to slide it to standing to uh, uh, continue the item. Okay. Is that all right? That's, that's certainly okay with me, Chair. Okay. So let's move on to uh, uh, discussing the Porterfield Creek Open Space Vegetation Management Program. Okay, and Yvonne, is, is uh, Hector Galvan? Um, he is. is. Yes, he, he is. One yeah, second. can you bring him in? Sure. You know, the audio is really working well, the whole system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what happened? <laughs> I don't know, because the, the IT guys are, 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 are kind to us. Uh, well, well, the chair, thank you for um, bringing forward this this item. Uh, I, I just want to take this opportunity to acknowledge the work our, our park superintendent Hector Galvan has done in coordinating with the um, Northern Sonoma County Fire uh, and the Fuels Crew on you know phase one of this vegetation management program at Porterfield Creek. Of course, it's a, a, a valuable. A piece of property. It's you know, two parcels. One's in the city. One's in the county. 
comprising you know 200 acre, 250 acres of open space. Um, uh, Hector oversaw really the uh, you know phase one of the project, which council budgeted uh, in, in in our budget uh, for fiscal year 21-22 about thirty thousand dollars, and we we entered into a contract with uh, fuels crew to. Uh, you know, do really what's called phase one, which covers about 12 and a half acres. And um, most of the, the, actually the vegetation work has been done now. It's really uh, finalizing some of the um, uh, management of the, the, the fuels that were removed and, and, and piled. Um, we are currently scheduled to do some, uh, what, they, what the fuel group was, I called it controlled burning and they corrected me as prescribed burning. <laughs> um, and and uh, some of it was uh, just because of the, the amount of rain we got drying out some of that fuel so that it burns uh, quickly and hot without creating you know, a lot of smoke and, and we want it to burn completely. But uh, Hector's also been coordinating uh, some additional work that uh, the uh, Cloverdale Fire District has agreed to fund uh, that is kind of adjacent to the open space in, but next to residential areas. And um, uh, I, I, I wanted to ask Hector just to give the, this committee kind of an update on what are the final steps for this for this phase one project and then kind of then next steps for this additional this additional work that the uh, fire district has uh, agreed to, to support. So Hector, if you want to jump yeah. in there. Uh, well, thanks, uh, thanks, David. Uh, uh, Vice Mayor Walter, Council Member Paula. Uh, yeah, so we we are uh, pretty much we pretty much completed phase one of vegetation management uh, there at the Porterfield Creek Preserve. The next step, the final next step for this project, uh, will be the the prescribed burn, uh, which is set on for Friday, February fourth, uh, for all current piles that are cured. So again, it's uh, Friday, February 4th. Uh, and this is like David mentioned for all current piles that are cured and then uh, a potential second pile burning day later uh, in the spring, uh, sometime before May or around May, uh, which uh, those are gonna be the piles that are you know a little bit more wet and one of the, 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 the strategy here is to try to create as less smoke as possible for the community. And that's the reason why we, we went with this route. Um, we ha I've been in contact with, with uh, uh, Susan, who is uh, Susan Waddle, who is the Dell Webb Association president. Uh, we went ahead and send her a notification of the proposed uh, prescribed burn date. Uh, we also uh, posted uh, some notices at the, at the each, at each en uh, two entrances of the park to let the community know about this event. And we also have plans to, uh, to uh, send out a Nixo alert uh, a couple of days uh, before the, the event. Uh, we're really trying to find every social media way to notifying our residents of the event uh, for that day. And, and lastly, you know, after talking to uh, Fire Chief uh, Jenkins uh, a few weeks ago, he, uh, he, he, he uh, uh, pretty much told us that he had some funds available to maybe perhaps do uh, a uh, phase two uh, vegetation management there for Porterfield Creek near the, the homes around Sonoma Drive, the, the cul-de-sac, uh, and uh, which I was very excited about. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, Sonoma Drive was, and then at the end of Clover Springs, that dead end road along, along all those homes there, uh, according to Fire Chief, that's if there's ever, knock on wood, it never happens, but if, if there's ever a fire, the fire would, would choose that route. Uh, which is where we're uh, thinking of applying phase two of vegetation management along that area, which is great. Uh, you know, the funding, they're going to be providing the funding and uh, as city employee here, we're going to be spearing the effort 
uh, with uh, uh, Northern Sonoma County Fire Fuel Fuels Crew. And we met with them the other, uh, you know, see a couple weeks ago, we met with them a couple weeks ago and we're in the process of, you know, putting the contract together and all the information together. And uh, we'll, we'll keep you, uh, you guys posted as this effort uh, continues. All right, and, and Hector, when will, when will you know from Chief Jenkins if there is extra funding for sure? Or is that just a wait and see a couple months or, or what? What is that dependent on? It's, it's it, the funding is there. Uh, Chief uh, confirmed that uh, by email. Uh, the, the funding is there. Uh, and we, uh, I think there's a total of $20,000 allocated uh, to that area. Uh, and uh, so the funding is there and it's confirmed by the chief. So, so what do we have to do to access that? Uh, is it done already or? I'm sorry, Chair. Chair, to your chair question, um, as well, Peck and I have had conversations around the district funding and um, our, our hope is just for simplicity is, is that uh, the district would fund the fuels crew directly um, if, if they prefer to uh, have it be contracted through the city that would be something we would um, we would just modify what we would ask is to modify our agreement our current agreement uh, which was 30,000 to include the additional 20,000 and then to get reimbursed from the from the district, uh, the Cornell Fire District to be able to pay the fuels crew. So they are separate entities. Um, but hopefully, just for uh, bureaucratic purposes, uh, uh, the uh, Cornell Fire can pay the fuel crew directly for that additional work. Um, but I, th I think the goal here was to leverage the the, uh, the work that's already been performed, kind of continue that, right. and, and really create. Uh, um, uh, you know, really the vegetation conditions in that area and reduce fire fire threat to those to those immediate residents um, get kind of the biggest thing for our, our effort here. So uh, I think Hector's uh, been kind of coordinating that that well coordinating the whole process really, but uh, on the contracting side, that's been our feedback and, and hopefully that that suffices. But if not, we'll, we'll, we're amenable. We'll uh, bring forward the agreement and ask council to support for that. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, on the phase two, when do you envision that's going to start? That we'll know, Hector? Um, yes, yeah, so uh, from the conversations that I had with uh, Marshall Tuberville, who is uh, uh, the fire chief for Geyserville, and the Notre Sonoma County Fire Fuels, who are performing the work, up, up, at this point, upon availability of of the crew and we have a tentative date for right after we i guess the end of so we're going to burn on the fourth so somewhere in the in the middle of march i mean february excuse me in addition to february oh, right we wanted to i guess the point was to 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 complete uh phase one for the full creek phase one and then and then schedule uh phase two Within the next couple of weeks, after that, and and just to, just to send you guys some clear some clarification, the next the next phase it's not going to be we're going to be grinding and chipping most of the vegetation for that for the stage two, we won't be performing any prescribed burns, it'll just be ch chipping. One more comment, if I could, Hector, uh, would you? Be able to reach out to the sister share and on their marquee, maybe put uh, a message a day or two before alerting the community of this prescribed burn. And this way it's kind of out there when it's going to raise, I'm sure, a lot of a, a lot of phone calls and a lot of concern when, when there's a lot of smoke being uh, coming from that area. So it might be good to try to get it out as people you know, drive around, see that there's going to be a burn up there. And maybe we can get it in, oh, it's probably too late to get it in the Cloverdale. Yeah, Cloverdale can have, can have, yeah. I'm not sure when that paper is actually. It's the 25th, happening. usually. Yeah. We, we did do, uh, we, it was in the newsletter last week. No. We, yeah. we, we um, also put the, a copy of the notice, the burn notice, 
um, in the in the newsletter. And as as uh, Hector indicated, he's going to post notices up there at the park. Um, and then we're going to get the next roller out as well. So the next I think will will provide pretty good coverage. But I think Hector, we can we can certainly check with Citrus Fair and see if we can get something up there as well. It would be good because uh, if people are up and down the boulevard, it'd be good to run a day or two. Yeah. One thing we, we, we wanted to mention was um, uh, that the, the park would be closed that day between yeah. nine and four while the prescribed burning was was uh, under being undertaken. You know, there, there's a possibility that you could kind of open certain portions, but we thought it, just for uh, utmost uh, consideration of safety, it's just easier to close the park. That way, the fire personnel can move about freely without having to worry about. Um, you know, folks walking and which trails are open, which ones are closed. Just uh, it's a temporary closure from nine to four. Uh, it, it might start a little earlier that day, just depending on weather conditions. But uh, our plan was to uh, again have the park closed for that day while that burns. Is there anything else on the assignment? Uh, no, no. This uh, we pretty much uh, covered it. I, uh, I, yeah, like I said earlier, I was very excited to hear that uh, the Cloverdale Fire Chief uh, Jenkins uh, had allocated some some funds uh, for uh, for us to utilize uh, in in our open space area. So that's 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 great news. Yeah. And then just for for future, for next year's budget, um, we are going to do a, an assessment. I guess you would call it the the third phase of to see if we can uh, see if we can come up with a, an estimate. To, to tackle uh, next fall, the, the phase, uh, phase three, I guess, of vegetation management there at the open space. Thank you. If there's no more questions or any other presentations on this item, let's move along to item number five, the American Rescue Plan Act. And, and David, is this you? Uh, th this was re re requested by uh, uh, Council Member Paula uh the items one two three and four mm -hmm. uh if it's okay john I, just to give an overview on item one and then um i think redora have you been coordinating with with uh vanessa on this i'm not sure if she she briefed you. okay great um uh, so we i've been working with both uh hector as the park superintendent and then vanessa our interim city engineer and, and west yost on developing a scope of work to do a feasibility study for uh, looking at opportunities to install uh, irrigation wells in our, in our parks. I think our, our focus really is uh, City Park and Ferber Park. Um, we think those probably represent your, uh, the, the two best opportunity sites, um, but also should, should be pretty much important to create this possibility as well. Uh, but because we do have uh, pretty significant irrigation, Usage at both City Park and Fervor. You know, it's, it's a tremendous opportunity to um, install uh, irrigation wells that then could offset our portable use. Uh, you know, currently we can also look to determine if, if as part of that, if uh, there there is an opportunity to develop uh, a well that can serve as, as you know actually for portable use, or it's something that could we, we might evolve as we look at this further. Uh, but I, I know uh, uh, Hector's been been looking at this very closely because we want to. We've been tracking our water use, so we, we know uh, we have really good. Well, that's a good idea. We we know exactly what we use in our park, so uh, we have that data. And, but what we don't have is the data around what's the water availability look like uh, at those parks. And so, Rador, uh, anything you want to offer in terms of? Uh, the feasibility of looking at our site for for irrigation wells. Um, so unfortunately, David, I have limited information for that. Um, but um, we did sh put in the um, agenda packet um, some of the details associated with the wells. I I do want to say that the uh, grant application is for. A little over three million dollars, and it's to look at um, the the installation of meter radio read upgrades. Um, so uh, that's more like an AM, AMI project upgrade. 
Um, there's a proposal to expand, expand SCADA to assist with controlling the city's uh, treatment facility and distribution system. Um, there's a, a well seven replacement um, uh, to drill exploratory borings and to construct a new well seven um, and a rehabilitation of well eight. Um, again, that's to upgrade the well and well casings. Um, so though the supply wells uh, projects are to, um, to expand the um, production of those uh, water supplies. And, and we're, we're, can, you, can you clarify uh, our, our grant application for to GWR? Um, was it two million or three million? For some reason, I thought it was two million. Two million. It's three million um, five thousand. Okay. So, so um, we'll we're following that um, and hoping that the the city will be awarded that. Yeah. Dora, when you. We, I'm sorry, when you talk about the uh, well seven, what were we going to do to that? Um, drill exploratory borings and construct a new well seven with a new um, pump station. Well, um, well, you know, I was under the impression, maybe I'm getting ahead uh, of ourselves for a couple of years, but I was under the impression that we were going to start trying to look for sites over on the east side of the river. Now, I know well seven is, is um, you know, it's already set up and, and running on that west side and it'll probably be more costly to do it on the east side, but with the retrofitting of the bridge, and I think the water pipe is already there, if I understood uh, something that, uh, that, yeah, it's already there. Wouldn't we be wiser looking on the east side of the river? I thought, just a question. I, I thought we were looking at in additional uh, not in replacement on the east side on the top. This was uh, the, to bring the existing well back up. Back up. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't think it was in lieu of, but it's an additional one. Right. It, it's it's an additional. It's an yeah. additional. And and there's a study that needs to be conducted to make sure that um, it would produce what the city needs. Yeah. So that's part yeah. of that. If I could jump in, share a couple of things. Uh, when, when I when I put this on here, what I was looking is mostly outside of the Russian River watershed. I mean, uh, when they start regulating the water, it's it's all focused around the Russian River, and that's we depend on that entirely for our water source. And we talked earlier about can we identify sites in other areas that are not dependent uh, that the, that aren't regulated under that Russian River watershed. And that's what I, when I put that down, can we, is there a way to move to see if there are sites that may be uh, out there? We do know, you know, we walked up on Porterfield Creek up in the hill up there where there was a natural spring and that spring actually served this city back in the late 1800s, early 1900s as its main water source. And I went up there during the heart of the drought, and there was actual water trickling out of the pipes still. And we kind of talked about that, and that there may be sites that there could be water available that we may want to look at future, not to uh, entirely take over the water supply, but when it gets into a drought condition, we have an alternative mechanism that we can have a well or two in a location that can augment and supplement the available water. And that's kind of what I was looking at when I asked this question is, it, it seems appropriate to be really looking how we can have a well or two as a backup mechanism away from uh, the Russian River watershed. So it's not dependent on that. So that, that was what I asked that to be put there or you know, start that conversation. Gotcha, I, I think we, we um... I think we, we fully understand your, your direction, Councilor Paul, and I think that's what we want. We do want to come up with is that 
uh, comprehensive strategy, really, of, of you know, looking at again, the potable offsets with new irrigation well, evaluate opportunities for whether we can supplement or augment our potable supplies. And, and then, you know, likewise, what we put in for with the grant and application, I know what Rodor was speaking to is we were really, Vanessa was and the team was trying to tailor our our projects to the funding, specific funding availability. And, and so some of that was looking at our existing wells and what can we do for example, well seven, you know, it's it had issues with air entrainment and production. So can we can we can we that's an opportunity to you know redo that well in a way that um, can, can support uh, additional production out of our existing system. So it's kind of multifaceted. Yeah. So, so, so basically this is trying to conform what we're going to be using the money for to the grant. And, and nothing outside of the current system. Well, the, the, there is the there is the new well component. Right. Uh, so there is that. I, I I think we will need to explore how that fits into you know moving uh, a well to outside the Russian River. Right. That would be something for Dora. Between you, Vanessa, and I, we can look at that to see if referring to moving the well. Though I would. Venture we would maintain our existing wells. Right. I should yeah. be in. I do well. And, and again, I just want to back up a little bit. I asked these to be put on there for one reason because recognizing the grant, and I'm hopeful we'll get funded, will remove a lot of the things that we talked with that art money. Oh, yeah. That's where I was going with this. And if the art money is not committed to do these, these particular projects that we talked about that are in our capital improvement front program right now, and this grant money becomes available, this art money, we could really focus on looking for new ways to identify water resources. And that's kind of, so I was kind of going down two roads here, and, and that gets down to the grant application. Um, I did reach out to both Assemblyman Jim Wood and State Senator Mike McGuire's office. I spoke to both. I, they're both going to be contacting the Department of uh, Water, or what is it? We sent it to a uh, uh, citywide, uh, yeah, the state uh, California Department of Water Resources for the drought, and they're going to be putting letters of uh, support in there for these grants. Uh, I sent all the information to them, and uh, we just need to get one more thing. And uh, from Senator McGuire's office, that letter will go out. So I'm hopeful they're going to be in our corner advocating that we do get this funding. So hopefully that will help support our grant request. And once we hear that, that if that does get funded, I'm hopeful we can revisit this art money, um, the best use of it to identify new water resources, because that's what we really need to be focused on, in my opinion. And which that would be new well, a new well or new wells as well, because the intent is to have water available. So is that, Kind of, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, that, that's why I was kind of trying to open up the door. If this funding does come out with a grant for our capital improvement project, which I'm hoping it does, then we can refocus our ARPA money into something that is going to produce new water for our residents. Okay with that. So all I need, and David, you're going to get that from me, is that address and the, where we actually not the address that we're instead of it, how it was where the grant application went. Right, right. Rodori, um, one of the requests from yeah, Councilmember Paula is the 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 address and the name and the address of uh, DWR for submittal of our grant application. So that we can direct letters of support from our assembly member and senator uh, to to the the appropriate state contact. Okay, we'll get that for you. Thank you. That's important because the letters already they just need that piece. Do we have a timeline when they're going to make the award? No, do we know, Rador? Unfortunately, I don't have that information and. We can have um, Vanessa get back to you with that. That would be helpful. Thank you. And how did we know about the, the grant? I mean, how did we find out about that? Was that, was that through West? 
I was surprised by Vanessa that the grant was available. Um, and then there were, there were some notifications that were provided via the, the state through their website. But, Joe, this was pretty much your item all of uh, D. Yeah. Are you comfortable that we've addressed each one? No, I, I'm very comfortable. I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, hopeful we're going to get funded, and I, I'm really uh, happy that both Senator McGuire's office and Assemblyman Wood are going to be uh, working on our behalf to hopefully encourage that we do get the funding in place. I had the wrong information in the staff report. It mentioned $2 million. And you mentioned, Redora, that is three million. So three million, yes. That, that's, that's, that's better. Yes, that's much better. Um, the last thing, if I could, Mr. Chair, is uh, uh, D4. And I just wanted, again, David is on that broadband funding. Uh, have we put together anything so we're ready to submit for that? Uh, well, I, I, I did. Check the regulations that there was, that the California Public Utility Commission released, and they haven't finalized their their funding guidelines uh, yet. They're still in process. I, I did check with our league representative uh, Sarah Sanders whether the current regulations we're going to provide for uh, city oriented projects, and uh, her her feedback was if it, it, it's uh, highly unlikely that there's the funding is going to be made available for cities with the exception of projects that benefit low-income communities the the, um, the funding i think is really geared to extending broadband to underserved communities so very uh to for working underserved populations and provide uh greater access to a community um because you know, I, I reached out for more of a direct comment as whether we would be able to seek grant funding for for uh, you know city purposes, uh, namely looking at our water treatment plan and our, sure. and our um, courtyard. And at least Sarah's response was it, it didn't look like unless we had a uh, a larger community project. So that'd be something I think maybe um, we we had a, a kind of a standing item on the joint city school subcommittee. Is you know is is there a, 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 a community project, maybe, or, or a larger project that we want to seek funding for, for extension broadband that might have, um, uh, you know, it lead to greater extension broadband connectivity um, within within Cloverdale? Um, I, I think you know where there's a lot of opportunities is, is particularly outside the city boundaries, is bringing that broadband out. And so that might be something we would want to look. look Collaborate maybe with the county on is you know do we support bringing fiber through the city to some of our outlying areas to again expand broadband broad broadband connectivity. Uh, but I think we need to develop kind of a concept of a, for a project that we want to kind of get yeah. to just for well, my, my issue would be city water and have it available in the parks, schools, uh, boys and girls club, and just have it. Uh, and we should probably at least have something ready because the funding is there. I don't know. I thought it had opened. I, I'm, but if Sarah said it had it, but what it does, I, I really think we really should go after that. And I, I know, I know it's not going to help with the, uh, you know, the treatment plant and uh, the city hall directly, but it's certainly going to be a, a huge benefit to the community. Thanks. We just received a report, and I know we received one a couple of years ago. Um, Mark, uh, Councilmember Cruz just sent that out uh, a couple of weeks ago. Mighty comes from jail, um, where it outlined Cloverdale. And it had, um, anyhow, what, what I'm getting to is, you know, trying to recognize which communities are under, underserved or low income within Cloverdale. I mean, how would you even do that? I know years ago, the Sonoma report said farming was was a um, uh, income challenge community. Would a program for that area, including the Boys and Girls Club, would that uh, uh, fit underneath these um, this grant season? Or is it just too small? Well, I, I, I think you're you're on the subject chair is the definition of that underserved community and. On our uh, city GIS now, there is some layers 
that show the designated areas in the retirement area is really the predominant area within the city that is identified as, as being underserved, uh, not underserved from low from uh, from broadband, but uh, has lower income community, you know, uh, residents. Uh, so it, it very didn't, didn't qualify for some of these funding categories. And so uh, we can look at that and see if that's an area that uh, we could we could target funding for. In, in, in the old Cherry Creek, the new facility yeah. that's being built up there. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. 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 That's how we are. I mean, so I, I would think it's an opportunity. The intent of the grant is to make sure that people have access. And we certainly support that. So to make sure that we could get as much community use as we can. Right. That includes, like I could say, our parks and everything, because the kids, that's where they, they go and do schoolwork. So. Right. I, th I think it's a, it's an effort. We just uh, would we'll probably need some little assistance with coming up with a, how to scope, you know, extending broadband. Maybe we partner with one of the IP uh, entities like Sonic to see you know, what would it take to extend um, yeah. uh, broadband services to these community areas to see if we can come up with a, right. a plan or a proposal. Uh, I that. think we should do that sooner or later because the money, once it's gone, it's gone. And I think we should be prepared to put in a grant request once it opens. And uh, because it, 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 there's quite a bit of money out there, it's in the billions once it opens. So then we can just kind of keep that as a just a for updates as we go okay. forward. That'd be great. Yvonne, if, if we could note, make a note that item uh, 5E4 have that continue on the uh, standing and continued items. Just for updates. Just uh, yeah, just uh, just for updates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course as well as uh, item five uh, B distracted right? Yes. All right. Well, the next item speaking of grants is an installation of new basketball court at City Park. And Kevin, is that yours? Or? Well, that was I asked that to be on there as well. But before we do that, can we do 5D3 as well? I just want to keep oh, that sure. as a, so we're aware of. I want to know what, you know, when we find a timeline and what whether we're awarded. Just that, just a quick update is all at our each meeting. So we don't lose focus and it's out there. Uh, yeah, I, actually, thank you, Mr. Chair. Item 5E, I just thought I, uh, we talked a little bit about that. And I know we had uh, a grant out there for to do some installation of basketball courts at City Park. And I thought I'd like to just keep that on, get updates on that, and see where we're at on that if we could. I, I, David, if you want, I can give an update uh, or Hector. Um, yeah, please do, Kevin. You can uh, talk about, you know, I know we, we submitted the grant application. Uh, yeah. The time yeah, the grant was submitted. It was non-competitive, so it was really just a matter of, of filling it out. Um, the total amount, correct me if I'm wrong, Hector, but it was around $240,000. And we, yep. took, we took projects to the council and gave them a variety of projects to choose from. They chose the basketball courts at Second Street Park. Since then, probably the biggest update we have is uh, Hector and I met with uh, Mo Engineering, um, who we looked at a, a, a bunch of the projects we're, you're talking about today, three of them, uh, to start working on the bid specs and getting the bid package together uh, so that we can get that out to, out to bid as soon as possible. Um, they had some good ideas when we looked at the basketball courts on how maybe we could save some money working around already there. Um, but the goal is to get two full-size courts. We're still holding out for that with a fence around it and maybe a Phase two might be some lighting, so we'll be looking at maybe some chases for some electrical in the future. Uh, we are going to be seeing what Mo Engineering comes back in terms of engineer estimates and then bid specs to go out to bid. So, Hector, I don't know if you had anything else to offer on that. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, you pretty much covered, uh, covered it uh, as far as the basketball courts uh, go. Uh, they, talking to Mo Engineering, they said that they we could be getting some numbers here within the next couple of weeks. 
some uh, some budget numbers together. So that's that's exciting. So we can uh, keep the process moving forward. Yeah, the, the hope is we can get it done. You know, with the amount that we've already allotted with uh, the grant from the state, and then the uh, matching the, the the matching city requirement. Um, so you know, we can design around that number, or if it's close to that number and we need a little bit more just to make it that much nicer, you know, we maybe we might come back for further discussion at the council, but they know the numbers, Mo Engineering, so hopefully we can work around that number. Well, well, well that does sound good, but if we could just back up to one second, Kevin, you had mentioned something about possible lighting. Now, I know we have lighting on the baseball field um, in case some of the games, uh, you know, run into darkness, but do we want to include use of the park after after dark? I mean, we have a residential uh, folks yeah. there. I mean, the thought here was just, you know, put a chase in in case we want to do that. Didn't really make that decision. And I don't think it's going to be part of Mo's scope for the bid process, other than maybe a chase for future electric. But well, um, I don't think we're going to have enough money, to be honest. And, you know, if, if that's a discussion the council wants to have about, you know, lighted basketball courts, we can certainly have that discussion, but it was just kind of a thought when we were out there, hey, there's electric around in the area. You know, should we should we provide a chase when we have the whole thing dug up uh, at that time? And it seems like it makes sense. Yeah, you know, for- yeah, absolutely right, and I'm sorry I misunderstood you, but you know, future thinking like that, we absolutely need to do. We talked about it at the pickleball courts as well. You know, we may not want it today, but yeah, please don't have to put that chase put in as well. Mm -hmm. I might, my Zoom's got some weird thing here, so I, I might lose you. So if, if I do, I'll come right back. Oh, that's just a mix. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just like to keep these items, if we could, Mr. Chair, yeah. as future, just for quick updates. I mean, I don't expect these to be. But I just kind of want to track as we're moving forward where we're at in the process. So if we could just keep that on the agenda under, uh, you know, it's uh, Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Until it's done. Well, thank you, guys. Well, let's move on to number F, which is uh, no parking signs on East 4th Street. And uh, that's in response to a letter that we received from uh, Molly. Um, yeah, and that's um, yeah, that actually was presented at our city council meeting, uh -huh. and, which was directed to us at the public works subcommittee. Uh -huh. And I know the city engineers have viewed the site. Do we know if that happened? I don't have a report out from uh, uh, Vanessa Apodoc, our interim city engineer, on this. Uh, we, we did discuss it at the finance and the police subcommittee. I think when it was originally brought forward because of the concern about park, uh, parking by RVs on on 4th Street mm -hmm. and the concern around that, the, the, the vehicle staying longer than it's allowed under the um, vehicle code. Um, one of the resolutions was that that, that follow-up did uh, result in the owner of that motorhome uh, vehicle moving, moving it. Uh, and I haven't heard any further uh, complaints or concerns expressed by the by the uh, by the owners or by the by the residents in that area um, in regards to eliminating parking on on that entire uh, uh, stretch of of Fourth Street here on the on the north or, or south side of the Fourth Street. But, um, so the kind of the immediate issue was was addressed through actions taken by our police department, but that. Uh, uh, I know Vanessa was going to take a look to determine whether uh, uh, installation of no parking um, and engaging in an enforcement program of, of the no parking provision was was uh, called for in that or recommended in that that will push the hall. I did try this, and uh, it, it is very narrow, and there are some long drives that go into homes on both sides, so it, it, it is a tight. I'd squeeze going down this street. So, yeah. Well, I, I, I drove it as well. As a matter of fact, I did it just before our meeting. And um, the uh, I, I, I come up that way once in a while, and, and it is always a little tight. But coming out of the alley on the um, 
uh, on the south side, it's really difficult because it looks like a regular driveway. And and when we decide to do something, I think we should do some red striping on the south side around that alley. Because when I come up that alley, you can't see to your left. The right is no problem because it's somebody else's driveway. But but trying to look to the left, it requires right up against that alley, trying to squeeze another spot in, it's going to be hard. Um, and, you know, parking is, I don't have to tell anyone, is at a premium. And um, it's, you know, I hate to do away with parking anywhere in, in the downtown area. But uh, a couple stop signs to, to keep that alley on the north side, where they're talking about, open. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, but again, we're going to have to wait for Vanessa to get back and look at that. Does that make sense? Um, so then we're just going to put that on hold. Uh, we, can, we can keep this on uh, again as we're standing on and we'll report back with some recommendations from a city engineer. Yeah, would, would, uh, just as a thought, I could, I, I'd like when you do uh, the city engineer, maybe meet with the person there on the site so they know that we're looking at it and we can talk and just. And they they'll know it's going to come back as well, just to communicate there. You you have their contact information. Yeah, yeah, phone number. I think down. that's important enough because they're the ones that submitted that requesting it, so we should be there to at least hear what they got to say. Well, she also has her email address on that letter, so yeah. even just a quick note. Yeah, perfect. I'm sorry. I said she's ready to go planning commissioner. Yes, she is. Yes. Um, measure and funding, uh, discussion options, available city attorney opinion. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I asked that this be put on. Uh, at our last meeting, we chatted about parks and uh, potential funding sources. And again, I, I followed up on a question you had with our city attorney, whether we can spend in advance our measure and funds. Uh, and so he took a look at it and I forward you a copy of it. But basically, uh, because we split that money, 50% goes towards our part-time uh, parks person, which is important. And then the other half goes towards park projects. That leaves about $47,000 uh, a year for the next six years. That's what's left on the measure and stuff. So, which is about $267,000 total over the next six years. Uh, he didn't mention in, in his response that the bond issuance would be about $100,000, leaving only $167,000. My question would be, uh, would we even have to go for a bond? Would we not be able to just borrow from within our own enterprise fund? In other words, uh, borrow money if we chose as a council to speed up some of these projects instead of doing little things, maybe actually one or two bigger projects and, and spend the money in advance, get the projects done, and then as this money comes in, replenish the loan, pay the loan down. So I just put it out so we're, as a, again, it's a possible funding mechanism for some of the bigger projects. Uh, there's not much you can do in the park area for 47,000 a year. And, uh, Unless we just put it in a, a separate account and let it build over five years. But there's no reason we know we have that as a revenue stream. We could easily take a look at a larger project and make it happen sooner and use this money as it comes in to pay that project. So, and that was what your question was. And so I wanted to get a clarification. Well, I have no. No problem borrowing from an enterprise fund because we've done that in the past years ago. And we might even have a couple notes still outstanding. And we do pay interest uh, on that money. It's not like we could just take no. it with a, without paying back that, that fund. So I don't have a problem with that. Um, the only thing, uh, concern I would have is with the Measure M money, um, it, I'd hate to see it all committed. To one particular project, but I think we need to keep a small reserve that we can build up um, in case something comes up in, 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 in the parks area. So, yeah, and I, I, I support that 
So I, I just know we spent a lot of money many, several years back on City Park going through and doing a schematic, and, you know, yes. and we had to broke it down into phases because we're recognizing we're just not going to have funding to do this. It's going to have to be phased in. And I think it's time we revisit that plan and take a look at it and see if we can start doing one or two little phases. But I know the basketball court Court is a big one, and I'm so happy to hear that that's moving forward because that was one of the things that was identified in that plan. And so, and I know there were some, some other things, so we could just take a look at it. And if there's one that requires, you know, 150000 to make some big part of that happen, this may be a potential funding source. If we don't put the money aside to make it happen, I don't know if we'll ever have. So it's just important, I think, to just kind of look at the options. And that's all this is an option. I just wanted to throw that. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, if, if the council decides that we do want to borrow, I think we have to check some other projects that we have on the horizon. Oh, sure. That skateboard park, that door park. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I have no project in mind. I, I, I hope you, uh, and again, we, we should be looking at all those, but there's, again, it's just the answer to the question. So it is a possibility if we decide to, yeah. It, there seems to be some annoying clicking of some type. Yes, it is. <laughs> Could you just uh, double check and if you're not on, if you're not speaking, please go on mute. Um, Hector, you're, you're the only one not on mute. <laughs> okay. Oh. Sorry, I was I, I raised my hand to speak, so I went on, on mute. Sorry. Okay. Well, now you can speak, please. <laughs> so just, just to touch on the just to give you guys back when we uh uh city council decided to allocate the funds, measure M funds, uh towards uh 50% of the funds towards uh staff, uh and 50% of the funds towards infrastructure repairs. Uh, the presentation back then was um, back then when it when we uh, uh, originally initiated. The plan was to set monies aside and build up the account uh, an account, build up the money every year to uh, replace Ferber Park, uh, the Ferber Park playground structure, which is the the oldest uh, playground structure. Uh, in the city, and uh, just to, I just wanted just wanted to throw it out there, just to let you guys know. Well, thank you. No, that's good information. I guess the reason you know you brought it up, Councilman or, or Chair Walter, yeah. and, and I followed up is it, it doesn't get cheaper each year. Each year the price goes up, and and if we have the mechanism, we know the money's coming, and we commit it to a project. In this case, if that was the project. Yeah. Then, then we can move forward and make it happen sooner, recognizing over the next two or three years it will pay down. But with the, the revenue streams there, to pay it down, and then we move forward from there. That, that, that's the only thought process there. Yeah, waiting the two to three years, it may be a ten percent increase or twelve percent increase over that. Plus, you know. So no, I, I agree with you, and, and and like I said earlier, Hector, no matter what we spend it on, you know, I mean. If we choose to replace that equipment, like we originally said, we'd be able to do it. We don't have to win. That's the best. Yes. Right. The constant, no, we can't. We don't have the funding. Just gets old too fast. It does. And when we can control it, we should. So if there's nothing else on that um, um, Measure M funding, but I would like that we're, yes, oh, maybe that should be at the end, but future, uh, just that we do review that plan, the schematic for this uh, city park, as well as uh, those kinds of projects. Hector would be helpful that we could maybe have like a, a master plan that includes all the parks, the things that we're trying to do. But that would be so helpful just as we talk about these projects. Okay. Maybe uh, just on that topic, uh, kind of a matrix with parks and with, you know, with, with proposed improvements or projects, yeah. and then each of those parks sort of kind of have a kind of a 
a tracking tool, if you will, uh, uh, so like a capital improvement project for each part. Yeah. Yeah. We do have our CAP, and then some of these things are, are they're more maintenance related. Yeah. Uh, we, we can combine both. Why not just specifically the box? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. All right, Hector, thank, thank you, you so much. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to uh, an update timeline repair of the asphalt and sidewalks on East 2nd Street. Okay, I'll participate. If that's okay, just a quick, quick update of what we've done today. Um, you know, the, I think the immediate issue was concern over some of the, the uh, existing pavement being ridden and creating a trip hazard. Our, our street crew did um, uh, conduct some grinding activity to remove the, the immediate kind of trip hazards and, and, and uh, address the condition of the, the um, damaged uh, asphalt. Uh, in addition, uh, our, our, our parks team did remove the, the trees that created some of the uplifting of the um, of the asphalt. So I, I think what we're what we're looking at is is really for next phase is uh, identifying a replacement area for uh, the, the, the asphalt where we we the ground to remove some of those trip hazards. Uh, and then kind of as part of a larger project, also looking at uh, uh, replacing the trees that were removed, but to do it in a way that should be uh, in meets current um, uh, Arbor standards so that, it, that we don't end up with a similar condition down the road with roots up in the sidewalk. Um, so uh, I know in talking to Vanessa, the goal was to, um, you know, kind of coordinate asphalt work in, in, in spring when conditions warm up a little bit, uh, it, you know, rather than try to do it well, conditions are so cold because the asphalt tends not to, to hold as well uh, in cooler, cooler, cooler conditions. So. Uh, we we uh, are planning to just do the work on the um, Fourth Street reconstruction projects, and we thought that would be a good opportunity while we're doing that asphalt work to see if we can coordinate some asphalt work on on the Second Street uh, as well. So I, I know that's something that Vanessa is actively uh, working with um, uh, our, our team at Regi Construction to see uh, about what it would take to. And do some asphalt pavement work on on, on East Second, um, and then I know Hector's been working on the on the tree issues. Uh, it will be you know an effort to kind of dig up those roots and, uh, and you know get some new, new trees planted. But that's an effort that uh, he's been engaged in really evaluating. You know what's what's a what's a, uh, a suitable uh, tree tree in that location. So. Okay. Yes, sure. uh, just jumping. Yeah, just on the timeline of the Fourth Street project, are we looking like in May, June? What do you what do you yeah? So on the um, on, on the Fourth Street reconstruction project, we uh, we've had some conversations with our with our with the contractor that uh, that we awarded the contract with. Um, one of the uh, issues that was raised really by our water team. Um, was that uh, the water laterals that are in the area where we're proposing to really reconstruct the pavement are, are fairly old. And it would be ideal to uh, look at replacing those, those laterals now rather than worry about or, or replace, you know, do the asphalt work and then have those laterals have to be replaced over time. So um, I asked uh, Vanessa to coordinate with Regia and getting a scope of work to go ahead and replace those. I think there's, um, I think it's 18 laterals in the service area. Um, and we've, we've got the draft proposal. There's also some additional work to uh, raise the, um, the sewer manholes. Uh, so, uh, and, and then last, we are working on a, on a um, final scope of work for uh, having our engineer team who close to the service as kind of manager for this to really oversee the work. So we're going to be bringing back, well, our target is to bring back February 9th for uh, a change order to address go ahead and replacing the laterals, completing the, um, the upgrade of our uh, 
sewer manholes, um, and and then having project manager in place with positioning us to really kind of start that work, um, you know, right in early spring. So uh, it was kind of on, on me that I wanted to uh, see about getting this getting these laterals done now rather than do something where we're going to have to tear up that that our new asphalt because uh, our, our water operator did express concern. That, that that might happen, and, and if we can mitigate that now, I think uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. Get, get it done now while they're, while they're out there. So we're going to bring forward at the, at the first meeting in February a, a proposal to update the, the contract that was awarded by council uh, with this additional work. And, and it will it include the work on Second Street? I'm not sure if, if, if it will. Um, we may, because I think that one we can just do a standalone. Uh, you know, since that was a bit of work, this is more of a maintenance item. We can just do a separate agreement with it, but we'll have, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to work on how best to achieve that. And will it include the sidewalk repair? Has the sidewalks lifted part of it? Yeah, I know Vanessa was working on that. Um, I think she was going to uh, determine whether we could do that in house. Uh, ideally, we, you know, it'd be nice if we could. Uh, have our, our crews perform some of that flag, flag work on our sidewalks. Um, and, and I know she was trying to determine if it was within our scope to be able to do that work or not, uh, or whether we have to whether we contract that out. So if we could just keep that for an update on it, I'd like to just keep on top of okay. that. I, I do worry about you know, potential right. injuries. And, and um, David, we're talking from um, that be paving on 4th Street that's going to go from Jefferson to the Ranger. Is that correct? Yeah, it's open map here. Uh, yeah, there he is. Yeah. Okay. Sure, it's okay with you. I can, I can report back on that. I know this is that's okay. fine. I, I, I was just reconfirming that in case Councilman Paul didn't know where it was going to go. Because we're not getting, I mean, that's just an example of how expensive it is to do a small section of the streets. Right. It's a, it, it, I, I certainly was interested in seeing if we could cover additional area. Um, and, you know, for, for what we're paying for that small area, it is reflective of just the cost of doing this kind of work. Um, and there's concern that, you know, given the old old pavement, that there's going to be some additional dig outs and things that are going to require mitigation to, to we begin that. Through the patient testing when this work starts, but I um, won't be surprised if there will be some additional, there might be some additional work to accommodate those, the area that we have proposed. Okay, well, that, that was a good update because it, um, it took kind of riding number uh, six, uh, six needs, I think. But also, somewhere, I think we, we have on this agenda the um, as an informational, at some point we have to have a serious discussion about citywide repair. Antonio, Tom, and I mean, the sidewalks down there, we, we've got to figure out somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure. What I did is I, I asked for that uh, the review and discuss the pavement condition of the Bay Area Jurisdiction 2020 report. And our we came in at, um, at risk, at risk, and we are uh, out of all the cities. We are at fifty-eight, with um, fifty to fifty-nine is at risk. So we're just getting, we're we're up at a high at risk, and the next level would be four from twenty. Five to forty-nine. So we're, you know, we drop another ten points. We're going to be in the fourth category. And there's only six cities or five other cities in the fourth category. So it, it it gets back to we really should somehow come up with a master plan. And every year we need to be putting some funding aside to start making, you know. And it's very expensive, so it's going to be very small pieces, but got to start. And uh, and I'm 
What I worry about is I know there's ways to prevent the black top from disintegrating to a point where you have to pull it all out if you treat it. And I'm not sure where, you know, we really should be focused on trying to preserve what we have so it doesn't continue to deteriorate and put and start figuring out how we're going to excavate and get rid of uh, the, you know, sections and re retop some of the uh, really, really, really poor areas that can't be treated. As you mentioned, you know, it's got a, it's going to run into problems. Right. And I'm thinking some of the newer areas, like, well, Del Webb's a good example. It's 25 years old, and I don't know if we've ever did a service seal over that property, over that blacktop to, to preserve that. And, and if we just keep letting it go, letting it go, what's going to happen is it's going to deteriorate to a point where you can't preserve it. So, so that's why I think we really need to develop a plan. And that plan, as we talked about with the striking, we need to visit every budget cycle. We need to look at this plan with the priority grades. So, you know, it's so easy just to put it aside and we'll deal with it next year. Unfortunately, it's not working. We really need to talk about it every year and start figuring it out. And there are some funding opportunities that have surfaced for infrastructure that maybe we might be able to to look at towards some of those as well. So I don't know. Well, you, you, you know, if, if there's money available for infrastructure coming out of the administration, you can surely think an area like common would, would qualify for something like yeah. that. But I'm not sure what they require in the way of grants, though, and that's something. But if we had like a report, like if somebody we came in and did it, you know, a report, we have this report, but which streets fit what area, and we have a plan, then we can actually go after grant funding, I think, as it becomes available. So I just put it on there for that purpose. It's not getting better. We really need to, to get a, a, a plan. And then at budget sessions, we need to be talking about that each year. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think uh, staff has a plan for new developments coming in now with the using utility, I think I'm saying that, uh, using utility districts, um, you know, that would be set aside money, hopefully, for the repairs of streets and sidewalks in that new development. Um, and I'm not sure if a metal roof type. Um, would work on individual streets where you could do that um, or a whole block section, but we have to figure something out. And, and it's not that we don't want to do it, it's it's just the capital required to do it. You can be here all day talking about that. But yeah. Well, the whole point again is yeah. I, I'm just asking that, and I don't know who we contract with, but just to have a a plan, what I call as a, uh, what's the right word I want to look at? Uh, citywide, you know, a citywide pavement report and, and grading. And then we, that's our plan. And then we know what we could salvage by survey sealing and restriping versus what needs to be totally redone. And, and then we can kind of break the city into sections and figure out. You know how much money we could put towards each of those areas each year. Well, we did pick at, at one point when this first came out with the SB1 money, we did pick streets. I remember uh, that, that we had four, and we didn't necessarily have to do them in any particular order. Right. Um, but again, that SB1 money isn't enough. No, it's going to take multiple years, obviously. But, but I'm also looking at the plan to with the infrastructure grant funding that's potentially available that we may be able to, you know, go after some of that. I wonder if that would be a good question from like the league or David at your um, city manager's meetings, you know, how are you guys handling your, your street repairs or massive projects? You know, they might have some unique idea, idea that we don't know about. Right, I mean, I think, I think that, the point that Governor uh, Hall makes about having a plan is you know, right on target. I think you know the cities that have been doing a better job in their, their ratings are going up. Are they're really every year budgeting a certain amount of funds, and they're in 
it, it may be small, but you, you, you complete a, 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 a paper project basically every every year. And if you have that plan, then you can also use it as a tool to help you right. get the grant, get the grant application. So, you know, what I, I guess what I was thinking when I was hearing it is we're developing this street striping plan is maybe it's a street right. striping yeah. and repavement plan. Yeah. And then council can help prioritize, hey, let's get this area. And we start putting costs to it. Um, it, you know that that, that planning work might it's an investment, uh, but it, it might help inform us on you know, we have a tremendous amount of needs, uh, but also where we want to prioritize and we can start just incrementally chipping away at this. Because I think there's I don't think we have any other alternative really. We're not going to get a, a huge pot of funds for it um, unless we apply for a grant, and, and then again we're just going to be able to target a, a certain area. For you. Um, but we just try to get in the habit of per year. Uh, focusing on uh, certain street sections, you know, hopefully we don't have to do reconstruction every time. <laughs> well, I know, and I can tell you there are some streets in the city that we know are going to need that. Yeah. But uh, my biggest concern, there's a lot of streets that are starting to deteriorate, but I don't think they need to be, they just need to be cleaned and, and preserved. Right, right. And, and if you don't do my that, opinion on the, I'm, I'm not from the Apollo a couple of years back there. We should really see that. So that's that's why I thought getting a plan sooner than later to address this. So then we have something that we could talk about. And I like your idea to be um, repay, uh, replay, you know, repavement slash striking plan and and create it. Where's the bad areas? What do we do? We may put X dollars towards repavement areas that we know don't need to be redone, and then maybe take a section that we want to do. It may be one block, it may be one block a year, but at least it's starting the process of making it. Most of the travel streets, yeah. Yeah, and, and Vanessa, she she did kind of already start on doing some of that work, so it's, it's it, you know, some of it we can do in house, and then if we can get a you know, Debbie Trans to help us do the assessment and then really come up with the matrix. You know, have to plan really good. Anything else on this item? Dora, is there anything you'd like to add to this? Or? Um, the, the, this is the fourth street project. And though Vanessa left me some notes and indicated that um, work will commence next week. And then a work hold will be placed on the project until asphalt plants open. And again, um, David mentioned that that would be March at the earliest. So, um, you know, the project will be moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the next uh, item we have is number six, standing um, and continued items. And David, I'm just going to throw that whole section at you. You and Kevin can go down that list, Hector. Whatever you want to tell us on an update on, on each one of them, go right ahead. If there's nothing, we just pass it from it. Okay. Well, uh, I just uh, I'll start at six eight. That, that's on the going to be on the council agenda uh, for this for tomorrow. Uh, the the you know there's some options there for for design. Um, we presented uh, you know because there's some different cost elements depending on if there's a preferred design. Um, and the um, assuming we get council support to move forward, uh, we will bring back the budget adjustment with the, uh, uh, the, you know, with the preferred design recommended by council. And, and we're, we're currently working on getting the proposal for doing the bid specs to put that out to bid to do the sewer and water connections. Uh, so that piece would have to go be done concurrently uh, to. Uh, any of the restroom options that are presented. The restroom options, that's a, those are kind of turnkey, those are brought in, constructed with a train and, and really put in place where we need to have the water and sewer connection there. Uh, so that, that's, that project, I think, depending on council's direction, is, you know, we'll, we'll uh, be able to move forward with that. Um, and, and similarly to Pickleball, I'll turn it over to Kevin and Hector, they've been also working on, on getting cost estimates for, for this project. 
Yeah, just uh, similar to the basketball courts, we looked at the um, infrastructure needed to support the bathroom. So we're uh, working with Mo Engineering for all three of these projects, the bathroom, the pickleball, and the basketball. And they're supposed to have us a proposal by next week. They all have to go to bid. Um, we've determined that in, in our discussions with the city attorney. So that does add time and uh, money. So, but that's really, we don't really have a choice in that. So they, uh, Mo, Mo Engineering is going to have a proposal next week, and we told them that our priority was probably going to be the restrooms, um, and then secondarily, the basketball and the pickleball. They did discuss the possibility of putting them all together as one bid. The only issue with that is the, uh, the basketball is a grant, so it gets a little dicey with the paperwork and trying to keep it all separate for the the grant requirements. So I'm not sure if that's going to be available, but that is one thought. So we're looking, we're moving forward and we're looking forward to, uh, to getting all these projects underway. Hector, I don't know. Uh, just, just Hector here, just on the uh, construction, just a couple construction notes uh, for the uh, pickleball court uh, that's going to be proposed at Ferber Park. Uh, there is uh, some major irrigation uh, lines that we're going to have to reroute. And um, by then, I think we'll, I'll have my part-time help, and we will be able to do that in-house. Uh, so that would save us, that's going to save us uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, and then we're also going to be getting rid of, I, I, I guess I should say, is isolating sections of irrigation and replaced with, we're going to be capping it off and we'll be replacing it with uh, DNG, uh, decomposed granite. So we will be saving money on labor uh, to reroute the, uh, the irrigation lines. And also in the future, we'll be saving money on water usage there for the pickleball court. Well, Kevin Hector, I was under the impression that you didn't have to put the pickleballs out to bid. I thought that uh, Anderson was going to come in and give us a bid on that one. Yeah, unfortunately, when we checked with uh, Jose and Vanessa to some extent, um, it just exceeds the amount that um, I know we all wanted to do that and we were excited about that idea, but um, we were pretty much <laughs> told by Jose that, uh, that we'd be running afoul of, of bidding um, uh, laws. So I, we did try, Gus, um, but we, uh, we were, are, were unable to do that, unfortunately, but um, it's going to add some cost and time, but it's still, it's still worth it, in, in, in my opinion. So it was a good idea, but uh, yeah, we, we can't legally do that. Thank you. We're still working on the process mix, though, from uh, Anderson and Anderson in terms of the different elements, because we do want, we want to have a, a, a best of process mix management there for, for budgeting purposes, of course. Um, I mean, if there is any opportunity after we look at that to not put it out to bid and we can do it in house through, through our own project management, we'll, we'll certainly try. But the guidance we've been provided thus far, then it, it looks like we to comply with the public contract, but that's where we are. Well, whatever we can do to expedite it, I mean, you know, we, I'd really like to see a couple of these finished, you know, by, by mid summer, uh, especially the pickleball and, and the restrooms before Friday Night Live kicks in. Right? And, you know, the restrooms we have talked about, you know, just picking a restroom, coming with the colors, and putting the done project in front of the city council. You know, not leaving it up for all five of us to weigh in. You know, it was that Gus and Joe dictatorship, what it was going to look like in the color. So, but um, I, I get what you have to do. So, yeah, it's, it's just another one that, you know, because of the public improvements, we'll, you know, we will have that big expense to construct the sewer connection and the water connection. And, uh, that means putting it out to bid. Okay. You want to go right on down the list or okay else you want to so just a quick up, uh, update on the uh, vision zero this is a, a plan that's being developed by our sonoma county transportation authority in, in partnership with the sonoma county department of health services they're 
they're really uh, trying to develop a plan to, uh, you know, when they say vision zero is uh, developing a, a plan to reduce or eliminate, you know, injuries and fatalities caused by traffic collisions. Uh, you know, currently kind of improving the health and quality of life, uh, particularly for, for low income and disadvantaged communities. So this this effort's been uh, a multi year effort. It's been in process now. I think it's going on at least three years. Uh, the the plan is actually coming going to be come before the SCPA board on, on uh, uh, next month, February fourteenth, and then uh, it's, it's currently scheduled to go to count or uh, board supervisors for approval on uh, March fourteenth. And uh, you know we've we've uh, been participating in, the, in that process uh, and offering our input and perspective on you know things that we'd like to see uh, to you know ultimately hopefully support additional funding for for you know, traffic safety improvements in our community. Um, and again, this, this whole planning effort was to to try to reduce fatalities and and, and um, collisions. So. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really at this point it's a planning effort that could lead to potential funding. And we're getting close to uh, having the, the board consider adoption of a, what will be a countywide plan, similar to kind of like the countywide bicycle master plan, uh, where, where uh, it sits forth kind of broad planning concepts for uh, reducing traffic issues. What I was doing. Okay, well, moving forward, there's the uh, update on the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, Potter Valley Relay like to see project. Really, you know, no no updates per se on that, other than, uh, you know, PG&E uh, has indicated that, that they're not going to, you know, fix the um, diversion uh, to that, you know, supports our water supply in, uh, in Lake Mendocino. So, I, you know, we're not getting quite the inflow that we'd like to see. We would normally have it this year at this time of year if, if that was functional. Uh, I know there's a lot of interested parties in trying to address how to resolve that, including um, you know, cinema water. Uh, so we're just continuing to track it. Uh, and, and if there's you know, any, any interest in us you know, getting involved uh, to try to get support for that, we certainly can. Um, but, but there are there are there are uh, various parties working to try to reestablish that, that, that um, you know, address the water loss because of the PG&E's inaction on repairing the, that diversion um, because of the, uh, the damage that occurred to their electro uh, hydroelectric facilities. Um, so that's that's really just the only update I have on that. Um, uh, we talked about uh, item 6E, the update on 4th Street reconstruction. Uh, I think item 6F will be added. This is an update on the airport capital improvement program. Uh, our, our primary project that we have uh, on our, what we refer to as our ACIP, is uh, our uh, drainage improvement project. This was to address the uh, flooding that occurs within the, the infield. Um, uh, of uh, uh, our, our runway and taxiway at the airport. Um, we, we've done the preliminary planning work and our next uh, project would be to seek, fund, seek funding through the FAA to actually fund a, a project. One of the challenges there has been we, we need to have, um, part of the solution would be to have outfalls into uh, uh, one of the, uh, either the Russian River or uh, adjacent creek and, and there's you know, environmental permitting requirements associated with that. So uh, working on that. So that's really where we're at on the on the ACIP is, is uh, looking at the uh, drainage improvements. Uh, but, but we 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 revisit that annually with FAA just to give updates and, and actually uh, we're working on getting that schedule uh, for review in, in, in the coming month. Let's see next item was um, uh, update on six acres mutual water company pre annexation process and for the truck. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, six, six G, uh, we got direction uh, to move forward with retaining W Trans. Uh, and I, that's a that's in process to have them start designing the uh, yield on yellow uh, mm -hmm. a signal uh, modifications to accommodate uh, the north and south bound traffic through the. 
So that, that's uh, a, a, just an agreement between a uh, uh, city and Debbie Trans, and that's uh, that's in process. Um, uh, item six H on the beach. There's a included in your packet is a uh, uh, technical assistance work plan that was provided uh, by the state of California uh, for the kind of uh, funding the you know the really the critical uh, design, environmental, and planning uh, for uh, supporting the extension of, of water and wastewater services to. Um, the six acres uh, project area, which is uh, you know, outside the city currently. Uh, so what I've included in the packet is a, the work plan. Um, it was uh, uh, executed in January uh, or January 6th. And so uh, they're working with the consultants that are gonna uh, assign the project uh, work to, um, to do, you know, do the various tasks. So it, it's uh, about four hundred thousand dollars worth of work. This is being overseen by, uh, really, by the state entity that uh, uh, was putting, uh, uh, you know, responsible for oversight of the project uh, through the um, California State Water Resources Control Board and their and through the safer program. So progress is being made. It's it's it's, it's, it's a little bit slow going. Uh, I know on the pre annexation agreement, one of the Components of that council approved it. One of the critical elements was the um, it was an exhibit to the agreement identifying the uh, project improvement costs, and and that was one piece we were waiting on from this effort was to get that exhibit so we could plug that into the agreement so we can finalize and get signatures by all all interested parties. I know there was some concern that the city was somehow delaying that process and. There was no intent whatsoever. Uh, it was really trying to get that final piece done, which the state indicated they were coordinating and working on with the cost estimates again for extension of uh, the water and sewer services, which was a, a pretty expensive endeavor. Because uh, ultimately, why that was important in the pre annexation agreement was that those um, this, the city's name was going to be listed on those applications. Uh, as because uh, the six acres isn't really an entity that can apply for state funds. So ultimately, part of the pre extension agreement tied to our support for those funding applications um, and, and cost estimates for performing that work. So that's why we're just trying to get that all buttoned up. Um, and I have had several emails written to them asking for that that final cost estimate so we can see that in the pre extension agreement. That button. But the council approved it, and you know, I'm authorized to sign once we have all the pieces. Where are we uh, cost wise directly to the city at this point? Do we know that yet? I don't know if I have a number. Uh, I think that we, you know, the majority of our expenses have been uh, staff time and, and, and legal costs. Uh, you know, of course, with our city attorney reviewing the agreements and um, providing guidance on some of the, the legal and technical issues. For, the pre process. Well, I, I was under the impression that we were going to uh, be reimbursed for a lot of our expenses to the state. Um, but I guess we're just going to have to look at the state. Yeah, it's unclear at this point, um, you know, how we might be able to, you know, seek, seek reimbursement. Uh, but, uh, we, we, you know, those, those costs, at least legal costs, are tracked with those people. Well, because my big fear, and I've shared this with you a hundred times, is all of a sudden the state's going to come back and say, well, okay, now you have to do Rains Water District and all the prayer road in sewer treatment and what have you, and you're going to have to provide it like this. Right. There's, there's actually a concurrent planning effort that's following almost the same process as was followed for six acres for the South Clover Down Mutual Water Company. So they're, they're engaged in, in a very similar effort there. They're probably about two years behind six acres in, the, in, in their effort. Uh, uh, six, six acres and completed the preliminary engineering study. And so that's that's where six acres is. is they're developing that study to really identify um, you know, what's necessary to support annexation in terms of you know, water system improvements and, and wastewater, uh, uh, extension of our, our wastewater system. 
it, it just seems to me that if those systems are failing and they're in the county, you know, why does the city of Logan have to burden the expense to bring them to our systems? Yeah, I mean, I understand from a humanitarian standpoint, it's a great thing to do, but from a financial statement, you know, we're, we're having to fund some of that. It's, it's just not right. Right. So, uh, it's, it's more than not right. It's really, uh, it's actually wrong in the sense where uh, if the state of California is mandating this, you know, under the Constitution, the state mandates are they have to fund them. And to say it, and then for the city of Cloverdale, which struggles financially, to have to pick up the tab doesn't, doesn't start to make sense. So I guess it gets down to they get away with it. Why were they funded? But I guess what's our legal right to maybe take them on to require them to dance? It's a state mandate. I mean, it's not something that we're doing. So we're doing it because we're being ordered by them. And there's a financial impact. They need to pay that. You know, that's a cause. We, we really need to look at what our, because you're right. What, what, what the next time, where's the county that ends it? I mean, if they're county residents and they have a problem, the city is being obligated to fund this. Why is the county not stepping up financially to help pay the bill? So, I mean, I really think it's a dangerous precedent that we're just kind of rolling over paying it. We need to look at what legal rights do we have because our residents shouldn't be funding these, these improvements. That's right. So, you know, I really think we should explore that. And that would be a question that we need to get answered probably sooner or later because there's going to be more down the road. And I can remember about a year ago, it was maybe a year and a half ago, I think you were aware of this too. The county supervisors uh, were talking about trying to get their 400, 400 separate water agencies in Sonoma County merged into a lesser number than that 400. And uh, they couldn't do it because they had no money to fund it. So it's kind of like, you know, don't come to the city of Globedale and tell us that we have to do this because you don't have money. Right. I think that, you know, the goal with this, the work plan would be to, you know, develop the, the plans or, you know, all the, you know, you do the design and improvement of uh, the water or sewer system that would in turn be covered by by funding provided through a Prop 1A grant. So they cover the extension costs. I think where it becomes a burden for the current users is that they, they, these, these houses, this property then becomes part of the city, it becomes part of our long term maintenance requirements. Um, uh, and, and then how that's paid for then is through general property taxes. So I, I think the area where we have an opportunity to have a discussion with the county is, is a, a, under the uh, master tax share in their brain. Because that's, that's what Santa Rosa did with Roseland area is they negotiated uh, a, a, an exchange of funds um, that kind of helped offset some of the long-term operation costs that were going to then be occurred by the city of Santa Rosa for absorbing these areas. And because they're, they're, I mean, you, you know, it's, you can you can get the funding to do the one-time connection improvements, and they'll they'll they'll, they'll you know, cover that expense and they'll pay our fees for connection. But again, that long-term operation costs are things that aren't necessarily covered by the property taxes that are generated by that. So there's an opportunity for us to. To negotiate that, and I know we had a conversation with Supervisor Moore, and uh, he, he kind of, I think, nodded his head that they'd be interested in that. But you know, how do we start that process of actually having that negotiation? Maybe we able to get, but I think now is the time to have that initial conversation or continue that conversation, and then see you know, how do we actually uh, uh, push that forward in terms of you know seeking an amendment or an agreement so that. You know, they get the property taxes, but they reimburse us a certain amount for a number of years. There, are, you know, some different options there. Well, what I I suggest that we write a letter, an official letter, and articulate just what you just said that we want to start a, a, a conversation regarding long-term impacts, and we want to talk about an adjustment on the property tax once this annexation takes place, and uh, and then. 
we start that conversation and we can, uh, you know, put it on the agenda as a informational thing for the council to weigh in and then to really see who they want from the council to participate, maybe the mayor or vice mayor, and, or maybe a subcommittee, and then we start that conversation uh, with, you know, at the direction of the council. But I do think that we should not have to absorb all these costs as a city. Uh, and just like Santa Rosa, who has a much healthier tax base than we do, and they were concerned about the Roseland. That's an excellent example and the impact on the city. And they have that conversation. So I think we really need to do that. Plus it sets the precedent as we move forward with these, some of these other items that could be problematic clockwise and, and a bit, you know, of what's going to need to happen if we're going to move down that road. So I would like to see maybe just a letter that kind of lays it out and uh, we need to sign maybe on the mayor's signature. Uh, and then we uh, take it from there. At, at some point through the process. I yeah. think we're there on this one. They, 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 uh, yeah, I, I you know, know it's see, happening. I don't see a reason why we couldn't, you know, uh, start the conversation. Yeah, start the conversation. Um, so, you know, I, I, I made a note that I, I think we start drafting the letter. We, I think we've had similar letters in the past, but we can, well, it's, it's a good time now that this has been executed and the work's been for. Maybe we even reference this and say, you know, now's yeah. a good time for us to talk about, you know, what's the long term. In fact, operation maintenance costs and impacts our city. Well, I think that's an excellent start. And I think uh, a lot of times, you know, once we're, they see we're united and we're serious, that they will work with us on this. But if they just don't do it, they're not going to give us any money, I think. Okay. That's it. Who wants to tell us about Rule 28? Rule 28. Well, they're including your packet. I I included a letter uh, that was addressed from uh, Tana Norimoto from uh, uh, the manager of the Rural 28 program with pg &E. And you know what, what's happening is I think um, pg &E recognizes that the Rural 28 program is, uh, you know, it hasn't been a, an effective program. Uh, so they're, they're really, I think, working to kind of uh, phase out the program. But we do have uh, some you know, existing credit balance, uh, which was indicated in the letter of uh, 894,000. Um, but, you know, currently, because we don't have a uh, active area identified uh, for the World 28 program, uh, what, what PGA's position has been is that they can reallocate, you know, what would have been annual funding contributions to that balance to other entities that have active projects to kind of help facilitate those. Um, in a way, it's not fair, but in a way, it also makes sense because they're, if folks, if cities aren't using it, you know, how can they, how can they uh, ensure that communities, you know, are making progress on this? But uh, there's there was also a correspondence from Eric who provided an update um, in regards to the program. So, you know, I guess really. What there's an opportunity for us to do is to look at, you know, do we um, want to you know, establish a district? Uh, I think we, we brought that to council. There was some, there was disagreement necessary. We didn't find common agreement on what areas we might want to define as, as a, a district under the Rule 28 program. Um, you know, we when we were doing our research on it. We found, you know, some cities were literally picking two poles and. and that this is our district, just so they can make any kind of incremental improvement in removing and undergrounding the poles. So, you know, we tend to, when we look at these things, we think, well, we want to do the whole street, but then we do the cost, we do a cost estimate, and we realize it far exceeds our ability to fund it under their credits. So, you know, part of it is just measuring, you know, maybe scaling down our perspective to a project that we can accomplish within our budget, maybe it's some additional money we can put towards it. Um, so that'd be something we, we could explore. This is something that we want to kind of revisit that if we put the projects that we did by the floor back on there and check, you know, is this something we want to kind of relook at? And, and it's, it's really not too difficult. It's, uh, uh, it just requires an ordinance by uh, council 
very simple ordinance establishing a district and identifying the area of that district. And again, it could be it could be as small as one pole uh, or two poles. Well, David, what's the date? Um, do, is there a drop dead date when we have to identify those? Because I mean, it would be an opportune time now. I mean, we have the warehouse storage down um, on North Globe, on South Globe Boulevard that is uh, already underground. Can you pick them up from that point and go north? Um, yeah, go north up to the Red Door Botanical. I mean, yeah, it's 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 we can it's not the process. process. Can we just can we just put that down, or do we have to do a whole engineering stuff? No, it's really it's really about defining the area where where council would like to, you know, underground uh, power. I mean, that's really as simple mm -hmm. as that. And again, I when we were looking at what other city how other cities tackled this, this you know. You, Pick what we can accomplish within the budget and, and identify that as our district and, and then look for the work. So, how much does it cost typically? I mean, I, I, a ballpark to do a one, two, three poles. I mean, uh, not on the street. Yeah, I don't have it well. Yeah, it, it's highly dependent. Yeah. Um, but I, I, didn't they say a thousand dollars a foot? Thousand dollars a foot. The PG so, was. So that's about right. This is a real rough estimate. And, and, and part of that is, is so you not only do they, they underground the, the poles, it's the, the service connections yeah. and then working with those customers or the residents on redoing their meter boxes. So it's, it, you may have an overhead connection to your house. So yeah. it may mean if you if run it, you're, you're trenching and, and putting it. Uh, um, an underground connection into their service box versus the overhead. So kind of every case is there's no perfect you know, we're, talking, we're, we're talking a, a, an industrial area, I would think. I don't I don't know that we're gonna go in. I, I mean didn't Mark uh, uh Bone have um, a section of Second Street? There was there, we we kind of looked at Second Street because uh, you know one of the things that we were we were thinking was on Second Street there's some poles that Really, are right in the middle of the sidewalk, mm -hmm. and so it's an opportunity to you know address and provide better pedestrian accessibility as well. Um, and, and, and so that was one of the suggestions was there. I think there was also an interest in in, in Healdsburg Avenue. And then, are, the, are you talking about Second Street where uh, the Eagles is? No, we're talking out by City Park. Towards City Park. 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 Yeah. Park. Yeah. I mean, because I was thinking by Eagle Tech, since the asphalt's all messed up, that would be a perfect yeah. street to go ahead and underground, and because it's all got to be redone, and that would maybe work to our advantage of taking care of two things. But again, I would think it would be less expensive, less of a hassle if we did it in a commercial area where we don't have to knock on doors and let them know the electricity is going to be locked. I mean, the industrial areas, a lot of those are just. Vacant lots. So I'd like to suggest we do seriously take a look at work on Second Street by the Eco Pit because that whole street is bad and, and we it needs to be redone. It's going to be, and, and if we could, this may be a potential funding to help pay to do that work. And do we, uh, I have to just think about it. We can yeah. do that one block. It's, it's accomplishing several things. Do we want to, uh, uh, why don't we? Kind of do our homework on this and, yeah, and yeah, sure. we, we leave it as a standing eye and bring back some areas for suggestion. We can look at East Second and the chair if you have if you want us to look at the South Florida Boulevard, you know, look at those instances um, and see, you know, where what can we accomplish within the budget that's provided. Yeah, that's so what I'm thinking. Yeah, this would kill, do two things. Yeah. Well, what is the drop dead date when we have to have our programs or our designated areas in, or else we're going to lose our funding. It's really, it's really um, on. You know, they, they, every year when they do their allocation, if, if we don't have a district date, they're going to take the incremental amount that they're going to grant to us, and they can reallocate it. So, by having a district in place, they they, they will stop that reallocation, which will help. There's you know, it's not a lot we get every year, but mm -hmm. uh, at least. 
we'll know we will have um, you know what our what our balance is and what we can what we can accomplish. You know, we're kind of we'll be helping to lock that in by establishing a district. So you know, I think our first order of business is identifying an area that we can that we really recommend and we pursue and um, establish the district that way the community prevents them from reallocating it. And then you know we can then start talking about planning how we would use those funds. But like to do the work. It's such a small amount of money to accomplish a lot a lot of area. So picking a smaller area, but also picking an area that's going to accomplish more than just one thing. I would think it you the use of the funding. I'm I'm not so sure that that they have goals. I don't know. I, I, I think that. that's already undergrounded. Okay. I'm um, not sure if they were. I'm looking at my map now and and I don't see any but by the same token. Well we could check it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I know we had identified West Second in part looking at the, the south side of the second street. And, and what, what happened was uh, the goal I think Council Express was was to try to do the whole stretch and, and, and it just far exceeded what we could accomplish with the budget. So you know then maybe narrowing our scope down and well let's let's at least target two or the three poles or, or whatever we can do within the budget to just you know, minimize the, those uh, obstructions mm -hmm. your, your side. all right so I, I think we've covered all of the items under uh, standing and continued items uh, so how about future agenda items Joe you said you had something um, I think we got that review of the master plan. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that was right. right yeah. And uh, yeah, city park review. I have that down. And, and just to kind of like on a side note, Joe, you're on the uh, school subcommittee. Um, I guess the new facility is open. Um, I took a walk around Jefferson over the weekend. Beautiful job. They've added parking spots. I got to tell you, that new gym. At the Washington School yeah. is beautiful. We had a tour of it, and uh, they actually have it broken down where you have two regulation sized basketball courts inside, mm -hmm. as well as the training for uh, you, you, they have a curtain that comes down halfway in the gym. You could actually have volleyball teams practicing and basketball teams practicing in the same gym at the same time. It's beautifully set up. They did it. A beautiful job, and it's going to be really good for the kids. Well, yes. my question was going to be Is the city council going to be invited to take a tour? I, I think they're going to have a ribbon cutting, yes. Are they? Yeah. It, I, the reason I'm on their the oversight committee, that's why wow. I was, it was just for us because to show us where the money's going and what they've accomplished. But uh, that's why I was invited. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. will. They're, they're going to do a ribbon cutting, and I'll check on the date of that. Okay. And uh, yeah, and they're going to get towards because, like I said, that Jefferson Street, that whole side street in the back there is just beautiful. Oh, yeah, and the classrooms are beautiful. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good to the order. Anything? Uh, just one thing, uh, and this is something maybe Vanessa can, can just a uh, point of information. I've received, I don't know if you've heard anything about the new stop signs that just appeared. Yes, on the overpass on South Cloverdale Boulevard. So when you come off Highway 101 going north and you come up and you're going to turn left to come into town, well, on the overpass coming east and west, there's stop signs on the overpass. So it's like three way stop. And those stop signs just appeared. And I, uh, somebody, somebody, somebody cut one down, but <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. What generated the need for those? There's certainly I've never seen a problem. They just appeared. And I would like to know if somebody could reach out to Caltrans to figure out what prompted the need for those stop signs. I've I've been contacted by several people and I say, well, you know, that's not a city uh project that's uh Caltrans, but it would be helpful to know what in the world generated the need because they just appeared one day. They came in and painted stops. And put a sign up, and now you have a three way stop. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, the notification I certainly didn't receive. Yeah, so I, my, I, as a point of order, I just like to see if we could reach out 
to figure out, you know, what generated it. Uh, we weren't contacted. There was, it would, it would be nice to know. So that, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay, I have the, just a quick uh, report now. Um, we were we were contacted by the uh, UC Berkeley's uh, what's called Safe Trek program. This is part of their the transportation program that uh, developed by UC Berkeley about completing a um, a complete street safety assessment for the city of Cloverdale. Uh, I my response was that uh, I. I Think it would be very supported by our, our city council to complete an assessment which would help inform um, about what kind of safety improvements might be uh, based on best practices you know recommended in, in our community. Uh, we have a kickoff meeting scheduled with uh, the, the engineering team at UC Berkeley uh, next week. Um, and our, our goal is to talk about you know, what, what is the safety assessment you know, entail. Uh, getting the complete streets program is it, uh, a program that entails developing uh, pedestrian, bicycle, and traffic improvements that uh, support walkability, pedestrian safety, uh, uh, you know, slowing vehicular traffic down uh, through through design. And so, uh, I, I think this could be a, a tremendously valuable assessment. You know, especially the University and their, their team of students would like to do it for we'll do it at no cost to the city. Uh, if, if this is uh, something you know could be a, a real informative happen. So, well, as we know more, I'll, I'll report out. But we, uh, it, I got an email last Friday just uh, indicating that they uh, 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 that they're interested in, in uh, working with us to complete the complete this um, industry safety assessment for the city program. When are you meeting with them? I'm sorry. Uh, well, when they had identified the timing, it, well, they wanted to meet the first week of February. So. Well, I think we spoke a little bit yesterday about this day, but I think it would be an opportune time to focus them in that um, Ashby Road development project because we're going to need help there redesigning <clears throat> traffic flows, et cetera, if that apartment complex goes through. I did indicate that there were various subcommittees. We had discussions about complete streets and have come up uh, various sessions with crosswalks, stop signs, new signals, so all sides kind of fit into that. So I'm not sure that would be a perfect roadway segment to evaluate. Hopefully, it, it covers even more than just stop signs. We'll find out. Well, um, I'd like to just take a second and, and, and thank uh, Rodora for being with us. Uh, give our best to Vanessa. Yvonne, thank you. We're going to go ahead and uh, cancel the uh, or, or um, adjourn the meeting. Kevin, thank you. Hector, thank you. Uh, just one last thank thing. Are, are there any other hands in the audience that people would like to comment on it? Nothing. Okay. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.